Here's my game played on the 14th round of the club championship yesterday night. Um, I was playing white against uh, a player that actually almost always plays the modern Benoni, so I could prepare myself um, e takes d5, c takes d5, d6, d4, g6, and in other games that we have played against each other, I have tried the time and variation with f4. Bishop g7 and then bishop b5 check that uh, theoretically it gives the best chances for white and this time I wanted to try something else what I did was after g6 I played knight to f3 I had uh, seen a few games w uh, played by Karpov uh, with white and he plays the move h3 and that's a very interesting idea that he um, prevents the light squared bishop of black to have a good development. We see often in the modern Benoni that this bishop is straight for the knight on a 3 and that helps uh, black and by playing h3 uh, white prevents this bishop from developing. Bishop to d3 and here there are many options for, for black. One that we s that is seen a lot and that was not played here in the game is the move b5 immediately. The idea is that if a bishop takes on b5, then knight takes e4. And if the knight takes e4, then with queen a5, this piece is uh, recaptured. And the pawn on d6 falls also as well. Now, in this this variation is it's actually played, it has been played many times and it is quite long and it ends in almost an ending. An ending. Uh, with uh, a queen for black and two rooks for, for white and it is a very interesting thing to, to try but in this game my opponent didn't play the move b5 he played rook to e8 castle a6 preparing b5 a4 to prevent it knight to d7 rook e1 supporting more the uh, e4 pawn queen goes to c7 the idea can be to play c5 and then knight to c5. So I played knight to d2, preventing that, and now the knight goes to e5. And here I thought about playing bishop to f1, uh, but I didn't do it. Actually, it could have been it would have been a, a good move. What I did was I played knight to c4, and then the knight was exchanged. Bishop takes and here bishop d7 was played while well, I had expected knight to d7 with the idea of going to e5 with this knight but my, my opponent played bishop to d7 still looking for future possibilities of playing b5 first play rook b8 and then b5 that's, that's the uh, the, the, the ideas behind this bishop d7 and also having the possibility of, uh, of, of uh, uh, connecting the rooks bishop to f4 this is an important diagonal for this bishop because the um, d6 pawn is the weakest uh, point of the, the black pawn structure so that's the important to put pressure on that knight to h5, bishop h2 Bishop d4. Now this bishop on d4 is looks very strong. Centralized, defended by his own pawn, and targeting f2. Here I played queen to c2, and my opponent replied f5. I had been looking at f5 before, and I actually had decided already that if he plays f5, I will take on f5 but that was not the right thing to do because at this moment if I had taken a little more time to think I could have seen that I could have played e5 because there is this diagonal towards the king that because he played f5 now this uh, f7 square is open so that means that he cannot take on here because then I play d6 winning the queen and if he plays something else I advance my pawn to e6 so this was actually the possibility of me for me to uh, to get advantage but I didn't see it because I 
didn't even think about it. I had already in my mind that if you place a 5 I would take and that's what I did. So a missed chance, missed possibility to, to get advantage. Bishop d3, queen takes d3 and now queen to f7. Here black starts getting counter play, counter play against uh, f2. But the defense is, is quite simple. Queen d2 is the best move. Defense f2 and uh, puts the queen in an important square that also looks at this uh, f4 square where the, the knight eventually could have gone. Rook f8 attacking once more f2 rook e2 defending it and then rook a to e8 and I played rook a to e1. Take rook, take rook and now knight to f4 and here I have actually no choice than to take the knight from f4. My rook is attacked and if I remove it then there is this terrible attacking move knight to h3 check. If I take the knight then bishop takes f2 and now if I go to h1 then queen f3 is checkmate and if I go to g2 then queen f3 check king f1 and then bishop e3 wins as well it's mating the following move I have to put my, my, my queen on, on f2 and then queen takes f2 checkmates so that means that here I have no cho choice then to take on f4 Bishop takes a 4, Queen takes a 4. We had a look uh, after the game at the possibility of Bishop takes c3, but uh, it doesn't really matter very much. So, uh, Queen takes a 4 was played. I took the Queen and he took back. And here I found this nice move, Knight to e4. Attacking the weakest point of the black structure, d6. The only way to defend it is bishop e5. Now I play g3. I wanted to get the rook out of this fourth rank where my a4 pawn is placed. Rook f5 was played, and in my visualization of the position before, I thought that I could play a4 here, but it's not possible because there is a, a, an important check here. B bishop d4 check and then my own pawn on d5 would fall so that means that here I cannot play f4 so I realized that on that moment and then I played g4 rook to f4 now knight takes c5 d takes e5 and rook takes e5 the a4 pawn falls but now I have a way of <coughs> getting an ending with a pawn more with playing d6. Rook goes to d4, I take on c5, he takes on d6 and now I have these two checks here. King f7, rook c7, king f6 and then I take on b7. So we have this uh, rook and pawn ending and rook and pawn endings are very very difficult to, um, to play. They are very complicated and actually I did not find a way to win this. It has not been a draw, and uh, I, I ma made now a decision. I played b5, exchanging this pawn, and that's actually not the best way to to play this. Actually, I, I should have kept these two pawns on the board. That gives me more chances to uh, to win, because after exchanging here, it's not very difficult for Black to um, to hold this a draw. However, I continued playing for quite a long time. We are now on move 46 and I continued playing until move 65. I'm not going to bore you with this ending because it's actually already a, a theoretical drawn ending. But I just wanted to um, to keep playing to see if my opponent would find the, the, the best defense and it was actually quite easy for him. Simply keeping the king... Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong button. Keeping the king uh, close to the h6 pawn and using the rook to uh, give checks to my king if my king tries to go anywhere. So this is the game that we played and after uh, 65 moves um, we agreed a draw. So I'm actually quite happy about the, um, 
the ideas of the opening this uh, knight f3 followed by h3 that idea and of course it's a pity that I didn't see this um, these tactics after f5 the idea of playing e5 because that would have given me so much advantage but anyway it was a very interesting game to play and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching this video okay thank you very much bye bye